Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Wonderland's War. This is a 2-5 to five player bag building area majority fantasy game where you take the role of a Wonderland faction leader. You'll be gathering allies and Wonderlandians trying to restore Wonderland and become the best faction leader. How do you become the best faction leader and win the game? By having the most points at the end of the third round. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in Wonderland's War. Now let's take a look at the components. Some of the components are from the deluxe edition of the game. You have the main game board. Around the outside of the main game board is your point track. Inside of that at the top is your battle track. And going around next to that you have your five regions. In the center of the main board you have your tea party. Ally chips. The allies are flamingos, creatures, red rooks, roses, and card soldiers. Tools of the Wonderlandian chips. There are 12 types of two chips each. Forge chips, madness chips, regular and double, poison chips, Tea Party cards. On the back of the card you have the round. Round one are blue, round two are green, and round three are red. And on the front of the card you have the benefit. Wonderlandian cards. At the top you have the title. Underneath that is the effect. And at the bottom is the depiction. Ally cards. These come in sets A through D. The set letter is in the top right. Then you have a depiction. Under the depiction you have the chips and title. And then at the bottom you have the effect. Wager cards. Quest cards. The top are the feats. And the bottom are the objectives. Starting Battle Miniature, Shard Die, Madness Shards in 1s and 5s, 4 and 5 player markers, Region Scoring Markers, Wonderlandian Miniatures. For the player components, you have the Player Faction Board. In the top left is a place for your Shield Token. On the left side are your Upgrades. On the bottom left you have your Leader Strength. Then in the center you have your Depiction, and below the Depiction is the name. At the top you have Active Chips, and then going down the right side you have Madness Chips, Forge Tracks, and at the bottom right you have Exhausted Chips, Player Leader Miniature, Faction Supporters, Faction Castles, Faction Discs, Faction Cubes, 50 plus point Scoring Token, Shield Tokens, Starting Faction Chips, Artifact Faction Chips, Faction Bag, and your Rulebook. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a 3 player game which takes 12 steps. Step 1, place the main board in the center of the play area. Step 2, place the region scoring markers. Shuffle the region scoring markers and place one in each region. Step 3, place ally cards. Choose a set of ally cards A through D. Place the set face up next to the main board. Then place the forge ally card next to the cards and place all the matching chips on top of the cards. It is recommended for your first game that you use set A. Step 4, place Wonderlandian. Shuffle and place the Wonderlandian deck next to the ally deck. Draw the top 3 cards next to the deck and place Place the miniature or chips on the card. Step 5. Place supply pools. Place the madness chips, shards, and shard die in the center of the tea party. Step 6. Shuffle and place tea party decks. Separate the tea party decks and then shuffle each. Place round 1 at the head of the table and then 2 and 3 to the side. Then deal a number from the round 1 deck around the table based on the number of players. 11 in a 2 or 3 player game, 12 in a 4 player game, and 13 in a 5 player game. Placing the remaining face down on the tea service tray. Step 7. Shuffle and place quest cards to the side of the board. Step 8. Place starting battle miniature. In a 3 to 5 player game you'll place the starting battle miniature in the red key. Then you'll roll the shard die and advance it that many regions clockwise. Step 9. Get player components. Choose a faction and get the corresponding faction player board. Faction leader miniature, 14 supporters, 5 castles, 6 discs, 1 faction cube, the 50 plus scoring token, 4 faction starting chips, 6 faction artifact chips, 1 dark blue double madness chip, 2 purple single madness chips, 1 forge chip, a draw bag, a shield token, 4 wager cards in a 3 to 5 player game, and 2 ally reference cards. Keep in mind if you're playing as the Jabberwock, you'll get poison chips equal to the number of players plus 2. Step 10. Place player components. Place your leader miniature at the head of the table. Supporters and castles next to your board. Four supporters on row 3 of your forge track. 1, 1, and 2. Place four artifact chips on the corresponding spaces on the right of your board. Four faction discs on the four upgrade spaces on the left side of your board. And one on the leader strength track at 1. Place starting chips. Two artifact chips. One forge chip. One starting double madness and two regular madness chips in your bag. Place your shield token active side up on the top left of your board, place one disc on the start score track on the main board, and then place a cube at the start of the battle strength track. Step 11, get quest and aid cards. Draw two quest cards and keep one, placing it face down next to your board. Then shuffle the quest deck and place it next to the board. You will then find the matching ally aid card and place it next to the main board. Step 12, 
Choose a starting player. The player who most recently had T is the start player. Then get shields based on turn order. In a three player game, you will get three for first, two for second, and one for third. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of three rounds. Each round consists of two phases, the Tea Party and War. Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, the Tea Party. In turn order, players will move clockwise a number of plates, stopping on an empty plate, gaining the card and the resources or benefits shown. You must place any supporters gained in one region. If you came to the head of the table, you must stop at the head of the table, refill the Tea Party cards on unoccupied empty spaces, and roll the shard die and gain that amount of shards, and then keep going with your turn. And then turns would go around until you have taken four Tea Party cards. Once you have taken four Tea Party cards at the start of your next turn, you must venture into Wonderland, placing your leader in a region. When all the players have ventured into Wonderland, the Tea Party ends. When the Tea Party ends, we carry out two steps. Step one, all players gain one madness. Step two, each player with the most shards gets one more madness chip and discards half of their shards rounded up. Keep in mind that if there is not enough madness chips, no one gets them and no shards are discarded. Also keep in mind that this phase is key for getting units in regions and ally chips or Wonderlandians. Once we've finished the tea party, we would move to phase two. Phase two, war. Each region where you have units will battle, drawing chips from your bag. To win, you must have the highest strength, but you can stop early. Starting with the starting battle miniature region going clockwise, you would resolve battles for each region. All players with at least one unit would participate. A unit is a supporter, Wonderlandian, or leader. Uncontested regions gain either the award or castle, and no wagers can be made. In battle, you would carry out eight steps. Step one, determine the start strength. You would gain strength for any leader or Wonderlandian present, as well as two per castle in the region. You would move up your cube on the battle strength track. Step two, first draw. Players simultaneously draw and reveal a chip. Step three, madness. If you drew madness, you would place it on the leftmost open space of your madness track, and then you would lose the indicated number of units. Keep in mind that your leader is last to be removed. If you have no units left, that would indicate a bust, and castles cannot battle alone. If you wish, you can flip your shield to return the madness chip to your bag. Step four, resolve when played chips. Any chip that has when played would resolve at this time. Step five, place the chip on the leftmost active chip space. Step six, advance battle strength by the chip's number. Step seven, determine victory. The battle is over when, all players halt or bust. A player reaches a strength of 25, or the only active player is in the lead. If none occur, then we move to step eight and draw again. We would repeat steps two through seven. If you wish to halt, you would put your hand in your draw bag and pull out an empty hand. If you bust, you would reduce your strength to zero, move your active chips to exhausted, and flip your shield. When filling the fourth madness space, you're placing all the madness and exhausted chips back into your bag. If you are not in the battle for a three or five player game, you can wager who you think will win place their faction wager card face down. If you're right, you would get one weak ally chip, but if you're wrong, you would gain one shard. When the battle is over, you would resolve the battle in six steps. Step one, region victory awards and castles. The highest strength would get the round reward for the region, and they would get to place a castle in that region. The second place would get half of the reward. Keep in mind that you can have a max of one castle per region. If players are tied for first, you would choose the award or castle and nothing for second place. If you're tied for second place, you would split the reward. Step two, complete quests. Objectives can be completed in tea parties while feats are completed in battle. Only one can be earned during each battle. When you complete them, you would place it face up in your player area. Step three, faction and Wonderlandian abilities. All players who didn't bust activate their end of battle abilities. Step four, you can forge chips into artifacts. If there is a forge icon on your final space on the battle strength track, or forge once for each forge chip in your active area, you would choose an active chip, place it in the leftmost space on any forge track, gain the reward from that space, and when you complete a track, you would gain the artifact chip from the end of the track. Keep in mind the rewards between tracks must be filled above and below. Step five, resolve wagers. Get any weak ally chip for a correct wager or a shard for incorrect. And step six, battle cleanup. Move active chips to the exhausted area and reset the strength track. Then we would go to the next region. And after all regions are resolved, at the end of the war phase, we would roll the shard die and advance the starting battle miniature, that number, return exhausted chips and madness chips to our bag. All Wonderlandians and supporters not lost would stay in the region, place leaders at the head of the table, 
Shuffle the three face-up Wonderlandian cards in the deck and deal three new Wonderlandians face-up and prepare for the next tea party. Then the next round would start with setting the table before the tea party. To set the table, you would discard the last round's cards, deal one card face-up on the table, and the player with the lowest points would get to go first. Then tea parties, wars, and rounds would continue until the end of the third round. At the end of the third round, we would go to the final scoring. The final scoring takes three steps. Step one, castles. Add three to six victory points for each castle based on the forge track. Step two, quests. Add three victory points for feet, three victory points for objectives, and three victory points for having both on a card. And step three, madness. Subtract one victory point for each madness shard. Once players tally their final score, the player with the most points is the best faction leader and wins Wonderland's War. 